it's been kind of a busy day. What I, what I wanted to talk to you about, we, uh, we're doing some demos over here. We're showing our HIP porting toolkit. So I wanted to go through that in some detail. There was also a nearly missed opportunity with Red Hat. So there may be some folks here interested in open source. I can talk through that stuff as well, too. So yeah, our whole booth here is Rockham. So Rockham is our new open source uh, compute stack, Radeon Open Compute. Uh, one of the things we're demoing here is a, a toolkit that allows you to take CUDA code and port that so that it runs on both uh, the original NVIDIA platform, but also can give you new opportunities to run on AMD as well. And so what we did is um, we took CAFE. So CAFE is a popular open source machine learning framework. It's like 55,000 lines of code or so, uh, optimized for CUDA, right? If you do machine learning, you want to use a GPU to do it. And the tool that we're using is, is called HIP. So this stands for something, but it's one of those cases where, as an engineer, we designed the three-letter acronym first, and then we figured out what it stood for later on. So the full expansion is the heterogeneous compute interface for portability, but we like to just call it HIP. HIP is designed to take CUDA code and port it to an intermediate language called HIP, or a, a C++ dialect called HIP. And I have some examples. We'll get a chance to look at what it actually does and what the transformation looks like. Um, Hipify code runs on the AMD Rockham platform, which is all of our GPUs, but you also don't give up portability to the, uh, the CUDA devices that you start from. So we took this 55,000 55, lines of code. We ran it through our Hipify tools. We were able to convert 99.6% of the code automatically. The remaining stuff took one of our developers less than a week to complete the port. This supports all the CAFE features because we changed a very small number of lines of code. We'll look at a graph here in just a chart or so. So all the CAFE features, including multi-GPU, peer-to-peer, all the filters, those are preserved in the port. And uh, the CUDA code, sorry, the, the HIPAA code has the same performance on CUDA, and, including the CUDNN support that's, that's baked into that. So this is... Um, this shows kind of the old way of doing things. We, we do still support OpenCL, but um, an OpenCL was used to port CAFE. There's a, there's a port there that exists. The problem was there's a, there's a huge number of lines of code that are required. We had to change 30,000 lines of code in the port. So remember, the, the original application only has 55,000 lines of code. And part of the reason here is we're going from a C++ uh, application to OpenCL, which is a, a C dialect. So there's, there's a lot of work that's required to do that port, a lot of manual work. This is the HIP port then. So less than 1,000 lines of code were changed. Most of those were done automatically by the tool. And then, like I said, our developer took a week or so to go clean things up. So this shows an example of uh, what the HIPify tools do. This was supposed to build out, but we had so much excitement with the slideshow. You're getting it all at once here. But if you could imagine that we're just looking at the things in yellow that change, that's what the HIP tool chain does. So if we start, if we back up, we're looking at it as a, as a kernel from CAFE, and you can see um, the name of the kernel is this BNL forward. We've added an extra parameter here. We've changed some of the ways that you kind of find your position in the CUDA kernel. The rest of the code is just standard C++, and that works on either path. So that includes namespaces and templates. Those are supported on the HIP tool chain. It, it, it's a full C++ compiler. Device libraries, so calls into log or exponent. The same device library exists on both sides as well. So there's no conversion or translation that's required there. So that was a kernel. This is the runtime API. So if you use CUDA code, you have to do things like memory allocations and memory copies. So we've just made small changes here. There's a, a nearly compatible, uh, a very compatible API that exists over on the HIP side that provides that same functionality. So the, these transformations in yellow here, these are done by the HIPify tools automatically for the program. That was the 99, part of the 99.6% that we saw. So this is kind of the flow at a high level. Start with CUDA code, you hipify it. We do always expect some developer cleanup and tuning. Um, there are differences in the platforms. So the, this isn't something that you'd want to use as a make file stuff, for example. The result of that process would be portable HIP C++ code. So the goal is that the developer then maintains the HIP port because we're giving you portability to these additional platforms and we haven't taken anything away from you. You get the same performance as, the, as coding in native CUDA. This shows a bit about how things actually execute. So if we start up here with, a, with an application that's been ported, you can choose which platform you want to compile with. So if you go on the CUDA path, uh, one of the reasons that we're able to deliver the same performance is we're using the same tool chain that exists over here. The conversion from HIP code to a CUDA, it's an inline, it's a header file, mostly inline functions. You go through NVCC, you're able to use the same tool chain as, as coding a native cool. 
CUDA. So that's why we have the same developer experience, including the same performance for HIP code on NVIDIA. If we go down AMD path, um, you use our C++ compiler, which we call HCC. Uh, you get access to our tools, the Rockham tools, so the Rockham profiler, the Rockham debugger. That's what works on, on this path. Uh, result here, and this is an important part, the, the HIP code is source portable. It's not binary portable. So at the compilation point, you basically make a decision, do you want to go this way or this way? That's still a very, very powerful capability to have the same source code that runs on both of these platforms. Okay, so this, this is kind of a summary. Um, maybe some of these things we haven't talked about yet. So some of the key features, so we have strong support for most of the, uh, the, the most commonly used parts of the CUDA driver API. So that's streams, events, uh, the memory management routine, memory allocation, deallocation, profiling APIs. We just added support for the driver API. Uh, so that's the ability to load code modules kind of explicitly. Full C++ support, so templates, classes, all that kind of stuff works on both paths because we built C++ compilers. Um, we talked about the code portability. One point here, we are starting to add additional libraries, so portable implementations of BLAS, FFT, and RNG that can run on both platforms. And then we give you a set of tools that automate the translation between the two. Okay, so one more slide here. So this is, this is um, the other part of our demo. So um, we took that, that 55,000 lines of HIP Cafe and we're actually running it on, uh, this is one of our Fiji GPUs. And uh, we've integrated it into the profiler. So this is our, our code visualization suite. And we've actually gone up into Cafe and instrumented the Cafe application so we can see some of the, 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 the layers on the machine learning running on the platform. So the convolutions in the inner product, you can see those on the same timeline as the GPU activity. So um, you know, this is a, a GPU application. So from all the green up there, you can see that the GPU is being very heavily utilized, as you would expect. We can also see the different HIP APIs that are called, the data transfers that are occurring. Um, and the last point here, we're, we're still building on our HSA technologies. You can actually drill down a, lit, a bit and actually see the HSA APIs that are being called way down under the covers there. I think that's my last slide in this, this deck. Um, why don't I just take some questions here? We can see what's on people's minds. Yes. So, <laughs> um, there's not a like a reverse hip of I tool, or maybe you'd have to spell it backwards or something. There's not a tool for that. The path we provide is through header files, so that you can compile back. The other thing you can do is um, you can detect which platform you're on. So it's possible to do to use features that are only available on one of the platforms. So for example, if there's a if there's a CUDA API you want to use, that can you can intermix that with with uh, HIP APIs. So for example, CUDNN is an example like that. Those, those APIs only exist over here, but you can mix that with, uh, with HIP code. The same is true on the AMD side. There's, there's features through our HCC compiler that don't exist over on the other side. So you can use conditional compilation to use those features on one path or the other. So the benefit there is most of your code is still portable, and you can just specialize in, in specific areas where you need to. Other questions? Yes. Can you summarize what are the hardware benefits between Right. So, so we didn't. I didn't talk a lot about hardware here, but one of the benefits we have right now is is we have um, the first HBM GPU. We released that about a year ago. So that's a, a 500 gigabyte per second GPU with very very tightly packed flops. It's eight teraflops of uh, single precision performance. So that's kind of a point in time. And really the advantage here is you get, you can choose the best in breed. So as you know, some a feature over on this side or a feature on this side, you're not locked in by the programming model anymore. You can choose based on, on the hardware that best meets your application's needs. Mm -hmm.